In the last videos, I drove the entire length of England in one day, and then I took my camper van on the Channel Tunnel between England and France. This is my first time visiting France with my camper van, and although I'm a bit nervous, I'm ready to start this new adventure. Let's go. I've just arrived in France on the Channel Tunnel and I have a destination in mind that I want to go to today but unfortunately my data does not work here in France. It said that I need to add a roaming package. So I've parked up here at a petrol station just nearby the exit for the Channel Tunnel and I'm going to add on a data package so that I can use the data and set the navigation on my phone. Because I'm traveling by myself, there's no one with me to help navigate so it's really important that I have that map set up, especially as I'm going to be driving on the right side of the road. I managed to add on a 15 day European roaming plan for an extra £15 on top of the £30 that I already pay per month. But that's quite annoying that I have to pay that. At least it's activated now and it means I can use Google Maps when I'm driving. My first destination is going to be a place called Arras and it's approximately an hour and 10 minutes drive from here. I don't want to drive too far on my first day because it's going to be my first time driving on the opposite side of the road and I'm going to take it very slowly and just be very focused on what I'm doing. Here's the route that it's suggesting that I take to Arras. So there's toll roads and non-toll roads. I think for my first drive, I will take the toll road because I just want to drive the least amount of time as possible. And then when I, after I build my confidence, I'm happier to do longer drives for more than an hour. But this is the route I'm going to take. I can't imagine it will be more than a few euros for the toll, hopefully. <sighs> time to do this. I'm just going to follow, okay, thank goodness there's a car in front. I'm just going to follow that car. But the map's disappeared. No! Why has the map disappeared? This is not, I'm not enjoying it. Oh my god. I've lost the map. Right, I'm just going to go for it. I don't even know where I'm getting off because I have no map. Oh god! There's a shopping centre up here. I'm going to go in there and put the map on again. Oh my gosh, right. This is so rough. Right, the map is back on. Hopefully that doesn't go off again. No map is crazy, especially when you're on your own. Oh my god, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Take the next left to stay on Terminal Eurotunnel. Right, right, okay. It's like... Right, I need to be in the ditch. Always with the ditch on my side. In okay. 50 metres, the fourth exit onto Boulevard de la Roca. Oh, I don't like driving on our side of the road. This is really, really horrific. We're back on the big roundabout again. Now, this time we're not taking the turn to Paris. We're going to the turn to Calais. I've been driving for around 20 minutes. I've now approached the toll area so I don't know if I need to put cash or I just get a ticket. Ticket perhaps? Okay I'm gonna just take a little pit stop here. Okay sort out the window. Okay so, so far the driving is going okay actually. I'm really glad I took this highway because it's really easy to follow and there's not any turns or anything like that and there's hardly any traffic. So far so good. The drive went really well and the toll road cost me about 12 euro. I noticed the landscapes were very flat compared to Scotland and the roads were very quiet. I've just arrived now at the campervan air in Arras and this is where I'm going to be spending the next few days and having my first experience of France. I'm so excited. The setup here is amazing. So once you arrive, there's a machine and then you pay. For example, 24 hours will be 1220 and then you can add in the water you can just pay with the card here so for two adults for 24 hours with water will be 14 euro 20 for one adult 1360 with the water and then you can just tap your card here and pay and then the receipts and the QR code will come out here 
and you get a QR code. And with this QR code, you can then scan for the electricity and that activates it for 24 hours. You can also use the QR code to empty the toilet and then also to get fresh water. When you print your ticket, you also get a code for the shower and the toilet. So it's really great that there's a shower here on site at the camping car air. It's interesting because a lot of the camper vans here are really quite large ones, like large motorhome RV type camper vans. My camper van is definitely the smallest camper van here. As you can see, it's right beside a river. So it's a really lovely location. You can have a walk along the river. From here, it's around a 10, 15 minute walk into the town center where all the action and all the amazing food is. I'm really happy to be here in Arras. It's a place I've wanted to come for many, many years. Today, I want to explore the city center a little bit and also try some of the famous French cuisine. So my first impression of the weather is that it's pretty much the same as home. It's cloudy and cold and rainy. Not much has changed between coming from Scotland to France. I think you might need to go more south if you're looking for sun and warmer weather. Arras is a small French city with a population of around 40,000. It's known for its well-preserved medieval architecture and vibrant town square, the Grand Place. The Grand Place features ornate Flemish Baroque buildings and the iconic Town Hall. Arras also played a significant role in World War I. I've arrived in the main square. The buildings are so beautiful here and behind me they're cleaning up the Christmas markets. Just ahead here is the bakery that I'm wanting to go to. I am so excited. I headed to a famous French bakery to try some local specialities. I was recommended to go to this bakery and I ordered the Mervelo, I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, which looks like it's a meringue covered in chocolate and I heard the white chocolate one is good so I ordered that one. I also got this, the Cramique, which is from this area too. There were a few different ones available and I ordered the chocolate one, my favourite. One of the most exciting things about coming to France is trying all the incredible food and drinks here. So this is the first item of French food. Wow, it's amazing. Inside is like a kind of soft cream. It tastes a bit like meringue, but it's not crispy and hard like meringue. And on the outside, it's got lovely white chocolate. So this one is actually really large. It's probably enough for two people. I'm just going to try a little bit. It's like a sweet roll of bread, very light, fluffy. And inside there's all those chocolate chips. I think maybe heated up would be very nice. And then with some butter on top. I've mentioned in a few of my previous videos that I've been learning French with Lingoda over the last few months in preparation for this trip to France. While I was in the bakery just there, I ordered everything using French that I've learned. Un crami sivo plate. You can join online classes 24 seven from anywhere in the world. The classes are taught by native level teachers and have a maximum of five students per class. In the last 60 days, I've done 30 French classes and it's been a great way to intensively learn some French basics for this trip. The Lingoda Language Sprint Challenge is a 60 day program with sprint and super sprint options. The Lingoda Sprint is 30 classes within 60 days and the Lingoda Super Sprint is 60 classes within 60 days. If you attend all your classes, you can receive 50% cash back or credits towards future lessons. Some of you might be wondering, where is Jean-Paul, the handsome French man from my village in Scotland? He's appeared in a few of my previous videos. Well, actually, as my French language skills have improved, our friendship has blossomed and he's invited me out for Valentine's Day, which I'm very excited about. If you'd like to build connections through language like I've done with Jean-Paul, the next Lingoda sprint challenge is starting soon. You can find out more via the link below and use the code 20RUTH for an additional 20 euros off. Next, let's check out a French supermarket. I next took a look inside a French supermarket. There was so much cheese and wine available. It was heaven. Something I've noticed in this city is there's a lot of independent shops compared to in Scotland. I haven't really seen that many chain shops so far which is really nice to see that. I've only ever been to France twice before, once to Paris and another time I was skiing in the Alps. So it's really nice to see a different part of France. I've always wanted to come to France 
amazing. All the buildings are so nice. And I've seen so many bakeries. It's amazing. It's cakes galore. I just want to eat them all. So Alexis, who helped me make some itinerary plans for this area, he recommended to try traditional French fast food called tacos. So there's this place here in Arras called O Tacos and I'm going to go in and see what they have. My tacos arrived. So it's a little bit different to Mexican tacos. I ordered falafel with mayonnaise and Andalusi sauce, which I'm not really sure what that is but it looked an interesting color. I ordered the small size and it's quite big and this was six euros 90. When I was ordering, I had the option to have with chips or no chips and I chose to put chips inside. Mm. Inside is falafel, heaps of mayonnaise and chips. And apparently this is a type of French junk food. Really interesting, really, really quite yummy actually. I'm about halfway through the tacos and the amount of mayonnaise in this is crazy. I think it must be about half a jar of mayonnaise in this one small portion. It's really quite heavy and I'm almost struggling to finish the small size. Apparently this is around 1,300 calories. I'm sitting here in the square just now. I just finished my lunch at the O Tacos restaurant and I don't think I'll need another meal today, although <laughs> I probably will go and buy some cheese later before I head back to the van but it was so filling and so oily with all that mayonnaise but it was very good but I don't think I'll be having it again on this trip to France. I prefer to eat more cheese and baguettes next time. So in front of me now is the biggest church here in Arras, Le Beffroi. So it opens again at two o'clock and it seems that a lot of the places here between 12 and 2 they're closed for lunch a lot of the shops are closed and i went to the church earlier and they said they reopen again at 2. inside the church there's also access to some tunnels under the city so hopefully they're open today i did hear they might be closed in january but i'd love to go in and see the tunnels and they're associated with the war also the belfry of arras is a prominent landmark in the city it's part of the town hall and stands at the heart of the Grand Place. The Belfry dates back to the 16th century and is recognised as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, along with the surrounding town square. So it's actually a belfry, not a church. It looks like a church and it has a lift and then 43 steps. So I'm going to head into the lift now. I'm excited to see the view from the top. We're in the lift on the way to the top of the belfry. Oh. So there's this narrow spiral staircase, 42 steps. Oh, wow. I made it to the top of the belfry. Wow, the views from here are amazing. Wow. French buildings are so beautiful. The roofs of the buildings are quite interesting. If you can see these ones here, the roofs are triangular and quite pointy. And then they have these very beautiful stone fronts on the buildings. They're quite, quite narrow buildings, a few stories high, maybe four or five stories high. Now that I've been up to the top of the belfry, I'm about to do the tour of these tunnels. So they're called Visit de Boves. This is the departure point and we're going to be heading in here, which is very exciting. The Boves tunnels are a network of underground passages and chambers beneath the city of Arras. Constructed during medieval times, these tunnels served various purposes over the centuries, including storage, shelter and communication. During World War I, the tunnels played a crucial role for soldiers on the Western Front. I took a 45 minute tour and the guide was excellent and gave the tour in both French and English. Nearby is also the Wellington Quarry, an underground network of tunnels created during World War I by miners from New Zealand. The tunnels were used as a barracks and staging area for British forces before the Battle of Arras in 1917. It's now a museum, however, when I was there, it was unfortunately closed for refurbishment. So I came across this cheese shop. I really want to go in and get some traditional cheese. There were so many cheeses available inside this cheese shop. 
I asked for some advice and was recommended to try a local cheese. Wow, that cheese shop is heaven. There are so many cheeses in there. So the cheese I got at the cheese shop is called Maroles and it's a cheese from this area in Northern France. I'm hoping to find a shop that's selling baguettes and I'll eat the cheese later with the baguette and see how it tastes. The bakery was still open and the baguette has been acquired. Cannot wait to have this later on. This baguette was 1 euro 20, which is pretty cheap actually. One of my favourite things when I travel to new places, especially different countries, is trying the food. So today I've tried so many different foods already and I'm really wondering why are French people not really fat? Because there's so many bakeries and bread and cheeses. Oh my goodness, the food is amazing here. Here are some of my French purchases uh, from when I was out. So this is the cheese that I got in the fromagerie. It was eight euros actually. I didn't ask the price before I bought it. I thought it might be like three or four, but I do want to try it. So it looks like it's made by a local producer. So that'll be good. I also got three pears as I heard pears are really good from this region. And of course my baguette. For my first day in France, it's been such a great adventure to come to a new country and explore and also try the local food. I really enjoyed my walk around Arras and visiting the Belfry and the tunnels was definitely the highlight. To go to the top of the Belfry Tower, it was €3.60 and to do the 45 minute tour of the tunnels was €6.60 and the tunnels tour was definitely a highlight. It was incredible to see those tunnels. I've never seen anything like it in my life. When I was walking around Arras I felt very safe and everyone I encountered was very friendly in all the shops and I tried as much as possible to speak French when I ordered things like the cheese and when I ordered the baguette. So nice being able to communicate a little bit in French and I'm really glad I did learn some French before I came here. I had an amazing time last night trying that cheese. It was so delicious. I think one of the best cheeses I've ever tried. This morning I woke up and went to a different bakery within walking distance from the camping car air. to picked up some more French items. So we have a pan au chocolat and then I think it was a chocolate tartlet or something it was called. And I also went for this baguette with seeds this time and it looks really good and it's still warm. And then this one's also a little bit warm as well. So I'm really excited for these. Over the next few days, I enjoyed the area more and met up with a friend. I tried lots more yummy French items like cheese fondue, local French beer, truffle pasta, four cheese French pizza, and had numerous trips to bakeries. Join me in the next video where I'll be sharing the reason I came here to France.